Hello everybody, this is Ömer Karagüzel from School of Architecture, Carnegie Mellon University. And this is the fourth tutorial on HV create development of HVAC systems using Design Builders Advanced Functions. And this is the second tutorial of CAV reheat systems with air-cooled chillers. In the first part, we focus on setting up the HVAC configuration from scratch. And in the second part, in this part, uh, we will focus on the modifications of the system parameters, component parameters, basically. And, and again, please note that these are the minimum modifications that you need to do for assignment 3. And they are not the entire spectrum. They are not reflecting the entire spectrum, but uh, due to time limitations, we should keep it within a man manageable level. And I will go through everything one by one. And, and I see that it is not that much of a difference between CAV and VAV in terms of uh, component parameters. But I will go through again everything one by one. And when we come to the point of a difference, I will indicate the differences. So you will have a chance to review again and uh, how to deal with these settings. Okay, let's go, let's go into this one of the zone. Uh, in the zone group at one of the thermal zones and right click and edit and you may remember this HVAC zone data and the very important settings again you should do this for CAV of course thermostat heating set point schedule thermostat cooling set point schedule there are some default schedules assigned of course the program has to run with some inputs it cannot be incomplete but these may not be reasonable. So please go in and check and create your own new uh, libraries or scroll through, browse through this design builders libraries and choose a reasonable one for your office type or another retail building or a, another building or for your building case, whatever it is, you should choose the right schedules, including setbacks, okay? It is within the same operational hourly schedule. You don't need to change or have a look at the comfort PNV, or you don't need to use humidity start control, humidification or dehumidification, no CO2 based control, no. But again, you can change this uh, cooling sizing, supply air temperature to temperature difference and set it to 11.11 .11, and do the same for the heating, change it to temperature difference 11.11. .11. These are for cooling and heating sizing setups. And how about outdoor air sizing? Again, very important. And we are discussing this in our lectures again and again. Find the information from the relevant standards, basically the ASHA 62.1 or 62.2, .2, and then find the sum method and find the values for flow rate per person, flow rate per zone area, and put them in here. Of course, these are meter cube per second per person or meter cube per second per meter square units. So if you find some unit in CFM per person or CFM per feet square, please make the right changes. Other than that, you don't need to change. Again, remember the target. If you want to apply these changes to multiple zones, you should select the zones that you want the changes to be applied and say, okay, and the changes apply. Again, this is it. Look here, it was different from VAV system. This time we don't have dampers. We have less number of settings. We don't have uh, maximum reheat temperature. Remember in the VAV there was this maximum reheat temperature and the default was 35 degrees C. This time we don't have it because it's, it's missing from the settings because we don't have the variable air volume system. Totally different, but nothing, not, nothing to do basically because things are auto-sized. So I say, okay and go back to HVAC system. Then what we can do is we can go to the Etude uh, Set Points Manager, Supply Air Set Point Manager. I should go to one of the loops, okay? Uh, for example, CAV Perimeter, and go back to Supply Side, Component Set Point Manager, right click, and edit and it's scheduled you can change it to warmest keep the 11 degrees for the min set point and the 16 degree 
for the max set point temperature that's it not more, nothing more than that how about the a2 system is there anything specific not much i can say you should check the night cycle on and you should say that the control type, type is cycle on any again you can decrease this cycling run time to 1800 seconds we have an extract fund it should be in place and an outdoor air system uh, you can place a fixed drive up economizer and change the maximum drive, drive ma maximum limit uh, shut off limit drive up temperature to 21.11 degrees is. and some at some models this heat recovery is checked on it shouldn't be like that okay if you see it is checked on please check off the heat recovery because we didn't do this in the VAV system so CAV system should not include this so go back to general availability all auto size yeah that's it so say okay fine and anything to do with the heating coil cooling coil no no we don't have anything to change because these are already auto sized and the availability should be 24 7 and for the cooling again all auto sized and 24 7 so nothing but look at the fan okay look at the fan now total efficiency we can decrease it to 0 0.6 pressure rise we can increase it to 1200 and we discussed this before why but you see something different it is constant volume and it's not changing and i don't have any performance curve you see it is missing in the VAV, we need to change it to Appendix G type performance curve for the supply fan and the return fan. But here for CAV system, we don't have such a thing. So basically, these are the two changes you want to see. Say, OK, and I need to repeat this for the extract fan or the return fan. OK, say 0.6 and increase it to 1200 pascals and say okay that's basically it so this is perimeter of course remember if you do if you apply some changes for one hu you should apply the changes for the other hu as well and i'm checking anything to make the changes basically yeah this is it so you look at the fans how about the boiler and the hot water loop again the same hot water loop and set point manager edit it is scheduled it should be outdoor a reset and when it is outdoor a reset we should change these values to to the new values minus 6.16 and high value 65.56 and it should be 10 so if you make these changes on the outdoor a reset type say okay it is related with this hot water loop set point manager how about the pump you can change the pump also adjust the settings remember motor efficiency is about 0.7 and the pump head is about this okay please provide these numbers and then you see the changes you made are shown as red letters as opposed to blue or black each one of them have meaning blue is auto sizing red is your customized and black is just defaulted and say okay and then go to the boiler right click look at the boiler what's happening with the boiler again it's gas fire condensing it should be i will click on it the boiler template and from the library i should choose 90.1 appendix g type boiler double click and the nominal thermal efficiency 0 0.80 80 percent efficiency with so as to comply with the baseline requirements say other than that, nothing say okay and the hot water loop is done look at the chilled water loop let's go to the chilled water loop and let's have a look at the set point manager right click edit and then schedule no outdoor a reset are the values fine yes you can keep these values the same no change in the outdoor air temperatures versus supply air temperature relationship input values four values should be the same no change i will go to the pump right click edit and in the pump data 
I will change 0.7 as the motor efficiency and I will change the rated pump head as again the same uh, 162,000 pascals of pump head. This is related with the chip water loop. Say OK. Go to the chiller itself and right click and edit. Look at the chiller. It is air cooled default. And you see, you remember from the previous tutorial, the reference COP 5.5 should keep it as 5.5. No need to change. And I won't say to change a thing here just accept it as it is so no red letters all black letters say okay uh, so we don't have a condenser loop so we don't need to do the settings for the condenser loop but of course you should go on and study this domestic hot water system and go to the water outlets water outlet and go down to the smallest detail okay and then remember this was 55 but i told you it can be 55 it can be any temperature before i created another schedule i guess i assign it i kind of duplicate it uh, and then copy and then edit and i change my schedule just to show you i rename it and i change it to values 43.3 always all the time so I say OK, and then this is a new schedule. I double click and assign. OK, so you can change it. You can find more information and change it. Peak flow rate again is another input is waiting for you to provide. And from literature, from reference building, from discussions, from some rules of thumb, you can find the peak flow rate. If you find it in GPM gallons per minute, you need to change it to meter cube per second, make the right conversion that's it but and plug in the number here but look at the flow rate schedule it is always on by default and again remember this is on 24 7 is very inefficient and unreasonable for me please pay your great attention to adjust it find some representative schedules from design builder library and find somewhere else from asher 90.1 user manual this can be an example but provide this uh, input here so and then on the demand side, yeah, that's it. Uh, on the supply side, again, set point manager. Remember, we change it to not 55. There was there was a new schedule that we found. It was called my schedule here, and I click double click and assign. Do not forget to change it, and then pump. Again, since this is a typical hot water pump uh, I changed the motor efficiency and I put the very same rated pump head again this pump head is just in the ballpark it's fine-tuned okay it's supplying the requirements it's it may be different for a real project but you should very carefully read the MEP drawings and find the information and the boilers Head it and the boiler is again boiler set point temperatures should can be different and can be my schedule and you can keep the same remaining the same but remember it's not electricity no it's changed the natural gas and the thermal efficiency is 0.80 provide 0.80 and the thermal efficiency and that's basically it the tank volume is auto sized already and the remaining can stay the same say okay in the loop right click the domestic hot water loop is there any properties it's waiting a little bit you can change the sizing design to 60 exit temperature to be sure and five degree difference exit temperature just to be on the same safe side plant loop flow rate is variable for say okay uh, i think it should be quick it may be quick but how did i do it i stayed on the dhw loop i right click I press edit and then wait a little bit and then see the results and change this exit temperature and the temperature difference say okay wait okay now these are the settings and I am checking again am I forgetting something no it was quicker because of the fact that we don't have any condenser and condenser loop and the pump and stuff like that so we don't have so it's faster Okay, now I will open up this Word file 
here it is and in this word file we have a list of what is different or the same in CAV reheat with air cool chiller compared to the VAV tab so type so there are different uh, bullet points the first one is chiller in the CAV is not connected to a condenser or a cooling tower so there is no condensing water loop and no condenser circulation pump because the chiller is air cooled at the CAV okay fine the second one is in the CAV the supply and return funds are constant volume because it is the definition by definition it's constant volume so they don't have performance curves because they don't have variable speed you know the VAV fans has variable speed that you can uh, operate faster or slow or slower they have variable frequency drives in the motors but now in the CAV type there is no such thing please keep in mind the third one uh, air terminal distribution unit e ADU or some guys call it ATU they don't have a damper mechanism right it's they are not adjusting the volume of air to the zone so but the reheat is similar there is a reheat and but we don't have any dampers there, there are no dampers this is just for another point if there is an energy recovery ventilator ERV system automatically defined for the CAV please check it off okay we don't need it we are not using it ERV system in both systems in both HVAC types we are not using it so we need to conduct a fair comparison between VAV and CAV type and don't forget to change incorporate an economizer okay you should incorporate an economizer and change the economizer high limit shut off dry bulb temperature 21.11 degrees how about domestic hot water system exactly the same I'm emphasizing this the water outlets the target temperatures max flow rates flow rate schedules boiler type efficiencies and everything between VAV and CAV they should be the same no change to keep the game as a fair condition you can keep the same air loop temperature settings like AHU's leaving temperature adjustments for the VAV and CAV remember we set this to the warmest the second one with minimum and maximum temperatures of 11 and 16 degrees Celsius and then this will finalize uh, the setting so these are the main differences of course I advise you to go out and re go, go out and find go and find uh, literature about these systems read about them and you can come to us and discuss the differences operational characteristics but this is a file that I will share with you guys HVAC system parameter modifications and again these are basically the things that we did in these tutorials okay going back to our design builder now I have the CAV system I have the configuration in and I have all the settings done including the domestic hot water system okay so that's basically it and now you can go ahead and simulate and compare but pay attention to 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 system configurations okay it shouldn't be two AHUs maybe you have four maybe five depending on your design depending on your depending on your building case it may be different this is just a basic very simple example I'm uh, working on it just to explain you the basic steps okay guys with these tutorials I uh, kind of finished this set two for VAV two tutorials for VAV two tutorials for CAV all in all we have four tutorials and you can get the use of these tutorial as much as possible to to accomplish your tasks for the assignment three of our building performance and modeling class Thank you for your attention again and this is all I can tell for the time being. Please keep an eye on the tutorials. We will I will come back with more tutorials about solar photovoltaic power system modeling. Thank you.